friends and welcome back to 155 books and happy valentine's day to you because today we're going to be talking about the five books that you could read this valentine's day so i always have a lot of fun curating these lists just because i love a theme um and valentine's day is a very exciting theme because it can be so many different things but this pile in particular is definitely some of my favorite books that have like love as a theme or relationships that kind of thing and starting off strong we're going to talk about Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare <laughs> obviously this could also be a what not to do book for Valentine's Day <laughs> um, because it does make me laugh when people say it's like the biggest love story of all time um, because it's not it's a tragedy <laughs> um, but of course the you know young love, the being swept off your feet kind of aspect of it. Um, it is it is kind of heartwarming in some ways. This is definitely a book that I could just sit down and devour in one day. Um, and as I'm filming this, I'm, it's before Valentine's Day, so I am thinking that maybe I could do that. Just set some time aside to sit and read this. Um, and also, if your love life isn't going according to plan, you can always read this and feel much, much better about things. But on a more serious note, this next book I want to talk about is one of the best, or one of my favourite romance books I've read in a really long time. And I think it's because of the complexity in which it talks about love. Um, and that is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Emezi. So Akweke Emezi's writing is phenomenal anyway from the books um, that I've read by them, but this one in particular just does something very clever. So I think it was marketed possibly incorrectly. Um, it is a romance novel, but it's so much more than that. But this one follows our main character, Faye, um, whose fiance, I believe, died in a car accident. And it follows Faye a few years after that, sort of going back into the dating scene. But in this book, Faye has sort of like three main romantic interactions and they're all very different from each other. Um, and they all kind of like build up one after the other. Um, and I think through that, Akweke Emezi manages to sort of display the different types of like romance and love and relationships. Um, but it also massively deals with grief, obviously with Faye losing her fiance quite like early in life. Um, the friendships in this, another kind of relationship, is explored really well. But this book also has you falling in love with some of the settings, some of the food that's mentioned, um, and also Faye is an artist and it kind of goes into artistry and different types of art. Uh, like I say, so there's so much packed into this and it's all beautifully weaved or woven together and written um, and one that I would highly recommend to anyone who hasn't read it yet because it's way more than just a romance book. This next book on my list is another big favourite of mine and another big book in terms of romantic classics. It is of course Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I couldn't make this video without talking about Pride and Prejudice. Um, so what I might do again on Valentine's Day is watch the movie. I love the movie, um, the one with Kira Knightley. Again, I do feel like I have to say that this isn't a typical cutesy romance. Some people probably see Pride and Prejudice as a cutesy romance, but in my opinion, it's really not because Elizabeth's character is just so feminist in terms of the fact that she does not stand for Mr. Darcy's crap. Um, obviously there is a kind of cutesy romance in there with Mr. Collins and Jane. Like I say, there's several, again, relationships in this, but another one, another reason why it's one of my favourites is the relationships with the sisters, uh, Jane and Elizabeth especially. Um, so again, for Valentine's Day, you can get way more out of this than just like the romance aspect. So you've got the relationship with the sisters, you've got Elizabeth's relationship with herself in terms of how much she respects herself to turn down Mr. Darcy because he's horrible about her and her family. Just so many things I could write an entire essay on it. <laughs> and I guess you could say if you wanted to read a book or watch a movie that has that happy ending aspect of romance, then this is definitely the one to go for. This next book on my list is a young adult novel and I was trying to decide which book by this author I should 
choose. Um, and I guess you could choose any of them, but the one I went for is Honey in Issues Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagadar. So I also absolutely loved The Henna Wars. And I think I maybe preferred The Henna Wars to this one, but I'm not sure because I actually just love anything Adiba Jagadar writes, um, especially with the sort of like cutesy romance side of things. Um, and this one definitely has that. So this one is obviously the fake dating trope, but it's also grumpy sunshine. Um, and it just features two amazing young girls who are very different, but when they come together, you can see how like, perfect they are together and how they bring out the best in each other and it's just so beautiful. Um, with Adiba Jagadar's young adult novels um, it also sort of weaves in the family aspect, um, The what, at least one of the characters is always bisexual um, which the exploration obviously of sexuality um, and there's always friendship issues as well I guess. Um, and that, that's why I like them because you can go into them knowing kind of what to expect but they're also different very different and um, yeah and then you end up just all like cozy and warm inside but with this one I do remember um it's got the three quarter of the way through the book breakup trope <laughs> um which I didn't actually see coming and it hurt me a lot more than I thought it was going to because we were nearing the end of the book and I couldn't see how things were gonna you know tie up happily together um but don't worry they do. <laughs> um, this one as well, um, because it's young adult and I love the way Adiba Jagadar writes her young adult novels, but they read really quickly. Um, and this one and both The Henna Wars are ones that I would love to reread and return to, because um, I think, you know, you'd get more out of it maybe a second time round. I do also want to read um, her most recent um, book which is the do's and do donuts of love which I think has that similar aspect to the henna wars in that it's like two people competing which I also really love and I guess I think I've just realized the reason why I like these is because it's set I guess in a very real world um and that's like I say how Adiba Jagadar weaves in the friendship family issues as well as like the romantic plot um, but like I say, you always end up feeling really warm and cosy and happy inside after reading them. Um, so this one definitely had to make the list for books to read this Valentine's Day. And last but not least is a book that I haven't actually read yet and it's a non-fiction book and that is Closer to Love by Vex King. Um, so this is a sort of healing type book. Um, kind of like Vex King's other books that I have read, so he has also written Good Vibes, Good Life and Healing is the New High, but this one is How to Attract the Right Relationships and Deepen Your Connections, but it's also in terms of your relationship with yourself as well as with others. Um, and I cannot wait to start reading this and might start reading it on Valentine's Day, because really the most important relationship is the relationship you have with yourself. So those are some of the books that you could pick up this Valentine's Day. Please let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and if you agree with the books that I've chosen or if you would pick something completely different. Thank you guys so so much for watching as always and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!